Greetings theists and non-theists. I am the Atheist Paladin. Okay, this is take two. Uh, I have actually recorded this already, but I realized I didn't have the proper mic on, so it was completely silent. But I'm going to tell you again what I'm going to do here. I'm going to actually want to feud a thing from uh, a piece of creationist bullshit, and then I'm going to desecrate the uh, passage from uh, Genesis. Okay. Uh, they have a little problem with the starlight. The thing is, it light travels at a constant speed. Therefore, the, ti the time it takes to travel one point is always a certain unit. That unit is called a light year. So if something is 10 million light years away, then it would take 10 million years to get here. So how do they try to propose to solve this problem? Well, the first one is in transit creation. Light was created in transit or to appear that it came from that star. Well that at first off is obvious deception. Again that not only that makes the universe uh, appear still billions of years old which is a deception on God's part. Uh, the other thing is that light, all the light that we see from stars is actually um, created inside the star by the method of fusion. So, uh, if that's not even true, uh, that is definitely a deception on God's part. So, the second position is um, the speed of light has changed. Uh, it is a, pro a solution called C decay. Well, the, the, the speed of change, uh, the initial speed of change, would have to first be 10 to the 69th power. That is an insanely high number. The problem is, if you change th the speed of light, you change the amount of sp energy and mass and matter. So that would change so many universal th uh, things, stars wouldn't be able to fuse light in the first place because it would require so much mass that it it's just insane. So stars couldn't even fuse at the first moment they were even born, so how would you even make light that would travel that fast? So that wouldn't make sense. Another thing that indicates that this is extremely insane is that we can see pulsars. Pulsars are extremely accurate. They're more accurate than our atomic clocks. We already have uh, tracked several pulsars that are spinning as fast as they're fast as they can. If they would go any faster, they would fly apart. We have seen these things go off without any deviation. A change in the decay of light would make these things not accurate at all. Even if they would left a few seconds apart, but this was traveling a little bit faster than that one, over greater distances they would not arrive at the same time, even days and years apart. So, they, so to say, if it was uh, dis, uh, slowing down, the spinning of the, the the pulsar was slowing down to match the decay in order to make it appear that it's accurate to us, would be crazy since we already see these pulsars spinning already at their max speed. So that just flies it out that window. So what is the third proposition? Well, the third proposition is uh, Dr. Russell Humphrey's uh, position, uh, where he has our galaxy in the center of the universe, and he proposes that our galaxy, or even our solar system, was under a different, basically, time zone. He was trying to use the, the theory of general relativity in his favor, saying that time for us was much slower than the rest of the universe. So as the rest of the universe was going through th several billion years of time, we only went through the few days of creation. So the, the light would seem like it was traveling faster, but we were actually once traveling slower. Well, the problem with that is, according to the general relativity, uh, is that the time difference is actually created by gravity itself. And this has been experimentally ex observed, and it's still observed today. Our satellites actually go a little bit faster than their clocks on the ground, so they have to account for this. Well, they only be off a few seconds a year. 
So how much gravity do you think it would take to uh, cause a difference in speed of light 10 to the 69th power? We would be a singularity beyond comprehension. We would be the most massive black hole there is. So obviously we wouldn't survive that. So when it comes down to it, the creationists would simply say that it was magic, that God did it. That God just simply superseded all the laws of physics and made the universe appear the way it is, which still implies deception on his part. Furthermore, the ancients didn't know of this problem because they simply believed the stars were in the firmament. Read it yourself. It is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 17. God created the stars in the firmament. The actual word is uh, Rada or something. I, I can't pronounce it. But if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance on Blue Letter Bible, you will, or uh, blueletterbible.org, you will see the word actually implies a solid dome, a solid metal dome that is beaten out. This is exactly perfect with other flat earth cosmology that we know from pagan myths. So, you are following a pagan myth if you believe in y young earth creationism. It is a simple fact. So let's not call this bullshit science and put it in a science class. Because that's simply just a load of fucking crap. So this becomes comes to my favorite part. Well, the last part I actually blew into the uh, first page of Genesis, but I think I still am a little stuffy, so... Uh, here we go. There we go. So, fuck you, Kent Hobbin. Fuck you, fucking retarded creationists. You cannot silence us.